valley low. Ain't no river wide enough, baby. If you need me, call me. No matter where you are. No Y'all, we are so back. We are so back. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lex. And for those of y'all who are not new to this channel, you must know that the first show that I actually recapped on this channel was Love is Blind. Now, since then, I've done quite a few other shows. If you're into the summer shows, you know, Big Brother, Survivor, I've been doing those. But for some of y'all, I think, you know, you guys have just been here. So I wanna say hi, welcome back. Welcome back to content that you like and is relevant to you. To those of you guys who watch everything else, even just for support, hi, thank you so much. And for those of you guys who are going to be new here, hello. I recap reality shows, okay? I like reality TV and that's what we do here on this channel. So if you are new, old, if you have not yet, subscribe to the channel. That would mean the world to me. Also, please, please interact with the videos by liking, commenting, sharing them with others. It does make a huge difference. I did get monetized this summer. Like I said, for those of you guys who have not watched since the Love is Blind video, I did get monetized this summer, which has been amazing. I, I'm just so grateful for all of you guys. Anyways, we are going to be talking about Love is Blind, season seven, episode one. And as I've said, as we said before in the previous Love is Mine videos, please do not put spoilers in the comments. I am watching episode by episode, which means I likely have not seen the next episodes yet. So please do not put spoilers for the other four episodes they released in the comments. Thank you. Once we get to episode two, then you can talk about one and two in the comments. You get what I mean? But like, please do not put spoilers. You will be blocked. <laughs> um, okay, because I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Yes, I know I'm talking loud because I want to make sure that you guys don't put spoilers in the comments. Okay. Anyways, let us jump into episode one. We are in DC this season. I did do a cast first impressions video that I will link here. Or is it going to be here? <laughs> one of these sides is going to be in the cards. So check that out if you're interested in my takes on the cast, like first impressions. I'm not going to be breaking down who everybody is, what their jobs are, things like that. So if you're interested in the bios and going through that, check the cards okay that is where i did the first impressions but we are in dc we already get some character development so let's jump in because i already have a lot to say so obviously we begin in the pods we see nick and vanessa we get that whole thing we find off off the bat that hannah she quit her job to be here okay she said she had the job she made a lot of money but she was so confident in this process that she quit her job in order to be on this show okay so anyways let's get into the pods the first couple we are met with is ashley a and tyler jim back on the back floor Ooh, i'm like sweating still shocks me on why i'm single definitely isn't from it's a pay it forward mindset you know yeah. what i'm saying if you're blessed it's like why not bless others yeah as far as kids yeah you know that, that that's a big thing do you want kids i do want you know uh, Tyler already tells us, hey, he loves hiking. He just got a puppy. He's very, very outdoorsy. And remember, Tyler was the guy that wanted a, a wife that rides horses. You know, he used to ride horses. So already he's kind of giving us that this is me. This is who I am. Now, Ashley says, look, I'm a foodie. I love to eat. I love to go out. And if there's one thing about the DC scene, girl, okay, girlies, the girlies love a little brunch out here, okay? As someone who lives in DC, I like a good brunch myself, okay? So a brunch is popular out here. Uh, Tyler says he loves to cook, okay? He says he's always cooking. That's one of his favorite things to do. But he is so nervous. And off the bat, Ashley actually picks up on Tyler's nervousness you know she she's like you don't have to be nervous like he tells her that he's a bit nervous you can hear it in his voice and I'm like oh that kind of melted my heart low key because Tyler seems like a very nice guy like I mean off the pods he seems very nice um 
but they both talk about wanting kids and it automatically you really see the spark between them. Ashley really appreciated the vulnerability that Tyler showed being that that guy who was willing to say, I'm nervous, like I'm tripping a little bit over my words. I'm not always just this big guy that is going to be doing whatever. So we then get introduced to quite the character, Nick D. Oh, you talked about your friends would like me. I think so. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> you think? Based off the conversation <laughs> so far. I think I'll certainly impress your friends. Who? What sports did you play? Um, I play basketball. Okay, he lets us know his last name is Dorka. We already get to see that this guy, Nick, is a smooth talker and not in the good way, okay? Nick is very much, I tell you what you want to hear, the way you want to hear it, but it's giving sleazy. It's giving sleazy. Um, a few of the girls already pick up on it. We get this little montage of him going through a few girls, and a lot of girls are like, oh, so you're a smooth talker. Okay, so you, 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 know, you know what to say. Um, it's giving up, boy. I'm sorry, it's giving up, boy. <laughs> uh, wasn't feeling it, but we get our first deeper conversation with Nick D and Hannah. Looking for my one and only. Right? Soulmate. My soulmate. I want this <laughs> to happen once and not have to worry about it. Exactly. You know? We're on the same page already. <laughs> <laughs> so they start to vibe off the bat about being the youngest in the group. Hannah is 26, Nick's 28. Uh, they do have good banter from the beginning. You know, they have a similar kind of like sarcastic humor. They both have that witty thing. Remember Hannah says, oh, you know, I have kind of like a sharp personality, but if you can break past that and realize I'm not being rude, then you'll see I just care for you. So I feel like we're already kind of getting a little bit of that sharper banter, if you will. Um, now, Nick does talk a lot about how he was an athlete, but now he's in real estate. You remember he almost went pro, but then I believe he got injured. Um, after the conversation, Hannah does talk in her confessional a little bit. She says, look, like I've had a lot of trouble finding a husband because people are superficial. They see me and they just see this beauty queen or whatever, but I've had trouble finding a husband because of that. My first thought was, you're 26, sis. <laughs> like, you're 26. What do you mean? Like, I'm not saying 26 is extremely young to be married. Like, I'm 27 and I'm married. But, like, I don't know. I just feel like it's not like you've been in the game for that long to already be like, well, every guy is superficial. Um... Now, she does talk a little bit about how a lot of people don't want to get to know her for who she is. They see her on the outside. And one thing that confused me about Hannah is that half the time she would say things like, oh, when people see I have a couple of extra pounds on me, they automatically throw me away. But then in other conversations, she would say, you know, people see me and I'm just the girl that's hot and that they want to be with. And I'm like, so do people think you're hot or do people think you're like, big and they don't want you. Like I was a bit confused about exactly what Hannah's situation is. Um, but we also see uh, Hannah have another deeper conversation and this time it's with Leo. Uh, they both talk about traveling. Remember Leo is the art dealer who I predicted lives off of mommy and daddy's money, which is very true. Okay. We got the backstory on his whole art dealing thing. Um, but they, they talk about how they both like traveling, going on adventures. Hannah says she loves Europe. She can't wait to go to Costa Rica. He's like, oh yeah, me too. I love that. But he tells her at the end of this conversation that he already likes her. Now, Leo in his confessional talks about how being an art dealer is a family business. We do get more in depth about how that comes about in another conversation. But he does talk about how he's super worried that all the girls are going to use him for his money. He's so insecure about it. He has a lot of money. And I'm going to be honest, the person who talked the most about Leo's money this episode was Leo. Okay. Not the girls, not everybody else. Leo. Every other conversation, I got money. I got money. I'm a rich art dealer. If people are using you for your money, maybe it's because that's what you're presenting as your first thing. I feel like this man presents himself with money and then is complaining that people use him for his money. Just a thought though. But we do see Leo go into his second connection, which is Brittany. Uh, off the bat, he's like, I really like your voice a lot. You know, there's a little bit there. Now, Brittany in her confession says, look, I've dated athletes and rock stars, okay? I've I could easily seduce any of these guys to fall in love with me and marry me and say something. 
but I know what I want. Some people want to be boss babes and make all the money and live their lifestyle, and that's not how I want to live. At a very specific time of life, uh, type of life, some of the women want to be boss babes, they want to make all the money, but I'm going to be completely honest, I don't want that. <laughs> Britney was very clear about the fact that she wants somebody that makes that sh money. She was very clear about the fact that she was taken care of in her last relationships. And she was very clear about the fact that she doesn't want to be the one that has to be a breadwinner in that relationship, okay? And you know what? At least she's honest off the rip. So if that doesn't work for some of the men, at least it's clear who Britney is and what Britney wants. <laughs> Brittany came on this show looking for looking for looking for a sugar daddy. Okay, she wants a man that's gonna buy everything. <laughs> um, all right, but we see Garrett and Taylor next. Okay. But if the Y had like a forty plus women's league, <laughs> <laughs> wait, how old are you? Wait, how old are you? Oh no, I'm twenty nine. Okay, I was like, damn. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> No, like, just don't let me shoot, but I can play with- Okay, they have a bond over playing sports. Uh, he does get into how he's a physicist, and she talks about how she's using clean hydrogen ener energy, sorry. Um, but there are some sparks already there. They both bond over being nerds, how she has, like, a hydrogen tattoo. He has some other nerdy- t I'm sorry. Uh, but they bond over being nerds. They kind of have that same thing going on, so you can already see a little bit of something there. Uh, we also get to see Tyler and Alex. So tattoo of a lion on my arm, and people always ask me if I'm a Leo. Why do you have a, a lion tattoo? I've always appreciated just like the leadership of what a lion with a great mane looks like. And I've always said, if and when I get married, I want to get a lioness. I'm glad we got to see Alex. Um, now, Tyler talks a little bit about how he, he loves lions. He wants his lioness close to him when he gets married because he's a lion and he's in power. I think he has a lion tattoo. Um, Alex gets a little bit into her backstory and she talks about how both of her parents have MS. For her, marriage and being there till death do you part is very important. She talks about, especially with her mom, how when her mom's MS got really bad, the guy she was with for 15 years left her because he couldn't do it anymore. Uh, for her dad, he, he's a big guy, you know, he's 200 pounds, 6'2", but he falls all the time because of his MS and how her, um, um, her stepmom has to really help him with everything in life. So it's just very important for her to find somebody that's going to love through thick and thin. Tyler then dives into his story about how both of his sisters passed away. So he carries them with him. He's the youngest out of them. And so he, he, they both really realize the rec, um, sorry, recognize the importance of family. They both recognize the importance of, again, just having that bond, that bond that can't be broken. So Leo and Brittany, they get into another conversation. Inheritance, like all mm -hmm. at once and kind of, you know, relatively young. I'm like not trying to say woe is me, but the business I like was really blessed to inherit, like mm -hmm. does, Leo talks about being lucky that he's never had to worry about money because he has a family business. He basically explains that he had many family members. Well, so the family business was not supposed to be something he inherited at this time. He was supposed to like go through school, live his life. Obviously, he grew up financially stable because of this business, but he had a multitude of his family members come down with cancer, his grandparents, his parents, basically everybody. It's very sad. Uh, and because of that, he got his inheritance basically all in one lump sum. So he's, he's living like, he's great. Well, great monetarily. Let me say that. Obviously not mentally, most likely. Um, now Brittany asks, you know, now that you bring that up, like, what about bills? You know, like, would you want to split it 50-50? Like, how would you want to do things? And he says, I mean, obviously, like, I don't necessarily believe in direct 50-50. Like, if I'm making more, I wouldn't expect us to go 50-50. But in the same vein, like, I do worry because my biggest insecurity is that a girl is going to just want to use me for my money, blah, blah, blah. Um, and she's like, well, that's
that's great to hear because all of the guys have just said 50 50 and i'm gonna be honest like i'm not obviously marrying for money otherwise i would have done that so long ago but i love to be spoiled i love to be pampered i do love nice things and uh you know the last relationship i was in i was taking care of 100 percent and she kind of goes on and on and on and on and he's kind of like Oh, okay. And my biggest thing with this conversation is Tyler, sorry, Tyler, why did I call him Tyler? Leo, Leo is the one that brought up the money in the first place. Like, of course, let's be so for real. Hannah wants her a man that's going to take care of her. Like I already said, she wants a sugar day, but it's like, he brought the money up first. And I feel like this is probably something he does in all of his relationships. And again, like, if you're going to lead with money, you are making it the focal point of the relationship, you know? So they leave. Leo goes back to the pods and he starts talking with the other guys. Close. I'm so fucking grateful for that. Dude, I would never guess, man. That's crazy. It's deep. And like, I grew up financially like very well off. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to build an influencer career. Like... I'm a rich fucking artist. Like how much money he makes, you know, again, he goes into this whole thing about how he's a rich effing art dealer. You know, he doesn't need to worry about stuff. He then goes on about why he loves Hannah for those reasons, because Hannah is actually interested in learning about art, learning about what he does. You know, Hannah's not just here to, you know, use him and ask him about money. You know, he's so excited. She's actually excited to know what he does. And I think it's funny. Uh, he claims he's feeling this for both girls, but clearly he's feeling Hannah a bit stronger. So Leo and Hannah, they have their conversation in the pod. Oh, that's cool. But like, I don't even know exactly what that even means to be honest with me. <laughs> well, I, I like appreciate like, that. You do art, like, I guess. <laughs> like, <laughs> there would be a time when I'm happy to like explain that to you more. Like, I don't think it's as relevant for like a moment. Uh, Leo tells her, like, I had a dream about you last night. I don't even really know what you look like, but I saw you. Um, he does talk about how he loves how she wants to know him and doesn't want to know him just for his job. Hannah says, oh, I mean, that's great. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I didn't even really know what an art dealer was. I mean, you deal art, I guess. And you could tell that Leo was a bit offended. You could tell that was not what Leo wanted to hear because he was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. But you could tell he was kind of like, oh you you don't know you don't care. <laughs> it was kind of funny um now he does say look like you are the youngest in the pods but you are by far the most mature that i've talked to we may even be twin flames <laughs> so hannah goes to her confessional and she says that leo does make her feel alive but at this point she is still open to other relationships so Hannah talks to her other connection, which is Nick D. You look like Hannah. You're, you're beautiful and you're, you're so sexy to me. Truly, like, I don't even care what you look like. I just, I just like talking to you. I like you. I, I like you a, a lot as well. And didn't like this conversation. Didn't like it. Um, there is a lot of flirting. There's a lot of talk about looks. There's a lot about the physical things he's going to do to her. So somehow a joke comes up in the pods about how they can be like Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Uh, he's like, well, I'm a little hotter though than Travis. And then he goes, I bet you're, a bet you're hotter than Taylor as well. Um, he then asks her like who her... Um, celebrity crushes or whatever and she says henry cavill and he's like oh i look like a less buff version of him it gets really weird and you can most definitely tell that this guy is hoping that he's gonna get like probably a blonde bombshell you know skinny blonde bombshell and even hannah clocks it even hannah starts to pick up like I don't think I'm gonna be what he thinks he's getting. I think he hears a voice, he's picturing something in his head, and she starts to get very, very worried. Uh, now, after this particular conversation, Hannah does go back to the pods and say, oh my God, I love him. I think he's the love of my life. But like, she does start to get apprehensive as time goes on because it was very clear that Nick was looking for something physically he can claim he's not but it was just so obvious in the conversation okay 
Garrett and Taylor. I don't know why I was saying Nick and Taylor. So let's let's take two on this. Add Tom. He's very handy. Like, um, he's built houses. He, like, built our family home. He's the dad that, like, taught me things. I don't know if I want kids soon, but I can't wait to see him be a granddad. So Garrett and Taylor, they have a conversation. Garrett said that he missed her. He missed her magnetic energy. Um, and he feels the, you know, she feels the same way. They get into a conversation basically about Taylor's mom's name and how Taylor's mom has a very unique name. Everybody calls her by her first name because she has such a cool name, but she doesn't want to tell him what that name is because it would give away her ethnicity. I have to admit, like I, I've dated white girls. That's all I've ever dated. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, so it's just, it is a new feeling for me, even without knowing like what ethnicity you are. It's just, I'm not sure what that looks like for me either, like going for like, it, everything is just so, it's just a shock. At this point, Garrett starts to get a little weird about things. He's kind of like, oh, I guess your ethnicity, it like never really crossed my mind. Like, I don't, huh, that's kind of strange. Uh, he does say, look, I, I have only dated white girls, you know, and I, I, I guess I never really, like, this is all really different. This is all really strange to me. Like, it, it's all kind of a shock. Like, I don't know, like I'm taking all of this in and I'm hearing what you're saying, but then it's like, I'm also wondering like, what are you hiding? Um, he's like, you know, the way you speak is very calculated, very methodical, you know, and, and it does make me question like, why don't you want me to know who you are? Taylor says, look, I just want this experiment to be sight unseen. Like I want to feel like I am enough with who I am without you knowing exactly what I look like. You know, I want to feel like I'm good enough and you don't have to know who I am. Now he says, look, I feel really strongly about you, but I guess I would have to know more. There's just certain things that I really don't know. Um, you know, he's like, I don't know how you look at all. And it's like, he's so hung up on not knowing how she looks. It's crazy. And for me, I'm just like, I don't know. Like, maybe I'm weird, but it's like, this is love is blind. Why are we telling people exactly how we look? I don't feel like you should have to know a person's ethnicity to be with him. And I don't think it makes her this cold, calculated, methodical person to not want to reveal what her ethnicity is in an experiment where you're not supposed to know what the person looks like. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, like I said, maybe I'm, I don't get it, but I was like, am I confused here? So Ashley A and Tyler, they also have another conversation. Tyler says, look, I will always be a protector, but I don't necessarily believe in, in gender roles. I love to cook. You know, you'll catch me in the kitchen. Uh, they do talk more about how they're both very adventurous. They like horseback riding. They want to go skydiving at their wedding. Now, we do get a little bit more backstory on Tyler, where he talks about how his mom is Serbian and basically his mom's dad and basically her whole family disowned him, disowned his mom, sorry, because she married someone and had kids with someone outside of her race. So all there really was, was his mom and his grandma. So when he was uh, young, I think he said around 10, he, his mom had sat him down and said, look, like your grandma has cancer. And at that point he didn't know what to do, especially when she passed away. So he didn't know how to console his mom. He was so young seeing her have nobody. So that was really an experience that shaped him. And he was really able to open up to Ashley about this. After the conversation, he's feeling on cloud nine. He even jokes, we're boyfriend, girlfriend. I'm gonna tell everyone you my girl, okay? Um, and he, he runs out the pod saying, I'm getting married, you know? So he's, he's feeling really happy. So we go back to the pods, okay? And there's a little chatter in the guys' pods. A lot of people are talking about Hannah. I don't think we would find each other. I, I know what kind of guy would want to go after Brittany. I think, like, a lot of us. But what kind of... 
how young she is, how she's the bombshell. Apparently everybody in their head has built up that Hannah is the bombshell. She's going to be the hot one, you know, but they talk about she's so young. Does she even know what she wants? Her personality? Is it right? There's just a lot of talk about that. Back in the girls pod, Hannah is talking about Nick D saying, look, I like him, but there's just something that feels disingenuous about him. I know he's experienced with women. I know he's had a lot of girls. He knows what to say and how to say it. You know, I, I kind of feel like he objectifies me. Now, back in the guy's pod, Leo's talking about how he, at this point, feels like he could see himself proposing to Hannah. And he says this as Nick is sitting right there. So anyways, Nick D and Hannah we end off our episode with them talking again. So Hannah decides it's time to confront Nick. She asks, why are you here? What is your purpose? Adept me and I'm funny and like I know a lot of stuff and like they're never interested in me. I am just hot to them or I'm just like a pretty thing to look at. As a woman, you feel like you have to be perfect all the time. Like I have to put my makeup. He gives some convoluted answer about how Nothing has ever worked out for him. He's been doing it all wrong. He really wants to find something genuine. Things have become clear now. And Hannah says, why? Why is it clear now? Like, what has made it clear? You know, you seemingly have it all. You're handsome. You're attractive. So why are you here? He flips the question back on her and he says, well, it doesn't seem like you need to be here either. So what is the purpose? Um, she says, because the guys I've dated outside of here are just like you, okay? The guys that see me think I'm hot and don't want to get to know me. You know, I want someone that looks at me deeper. There is more to me than just my looks, you know? I, there's more to me than just an attractive face. He's like, okay, I don't get what the problem here because exactly what you described is what I want in a wife. You know, she says, look, I am worried that you only like me because you believe that I'm hot. <laughs> I believe it too. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I was watching it, I was like, this man definitely thinks he's getting a girl that looks a very specific way. And mind you, I don't want anybody to think I'm calling Hannah unattractive. I actually think she's a beautiful girl. I'm just saying, I think that Hannah clocked it, the girls clocked it, I clocked it, that this man thinks he's getting a girl that looks a very certain way. And I just don't know that Hannah is going to be exactly what he thinks, he, like what he's picturing in his head. Um, you know, so they go back and forth for a while. He says, I don't get it. You're exactly what I want in a wife. Like you are perfect, Hannah. I love you inside and out. I don't even care what you look like. He's word vomiting. He's laying it on super thick. Nothing about this guy feels genuine. Finally, they get to the end of the conversation and Hannah's kind of like, I don't know, like I like you, but I don't know if I want to like leave it here with you. I don't know what I want to do. But ultimately she does tell him, look, like I like you. I think you're a great guy, but I feel like my connections with others are stronger. So I want to leave it here. And he's like, really? Because I really liked you, Hannah. He's like, well, at this point, I have nothing more to say. Hope your other connections go well. Have a great day. <laughs> oh God. So they go back to the pods and as they're getting back in the pods, Hannah's back. She's upset. Brittany walks in and she's like, oh my God, Leo. I'm not sure. And he said, you're my person I want to marry. Mm -hmm. I have to pee so bad. I'm about to pee my pants. Oh my God. I was like, Leo, oh. I did not. Oh. And as she's talking about her conversation, what happened with Leo, Hannah's sitting right there. And she's like, oh my God, I did not mean to do that as Hannah was sitting there. So that is how we ended our episode off. Um, the theme and the moral that I'm going to leave us with is love is supposed to be blind, okay? Love is not supposed to be, hey, if you look like this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, then I'll be into you. Love is supposed to be blind. And I feel like for some of these people, love is already not blind. 
Anyways, if you made it to this point in the video, that means you like the video. So I greatly appreciate it if you could like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you have the bell on so you always know when I drop a new video and make sure you are still subscribed. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, we are so back. I'm so glad we're back for Love is Blind. I'm so glad my Love is Blind squad. I can't wait to see y'all back in the comments again because I miss y'all. Okay, so thank you. Have a great day. See you guys in the next one. Bye.